to know whether a drug is safe and effective in human beings. And computer simulation and animal testing can only really tell us so much about how a new treatment might work. And at this point in time, there's no substitute for testing in a living human body, in a living human being. You know, clinical trials really answer three short questions. Is the treatment safe and is it effective? How well does it work and does it offer any advantages of a treatment we already have? And what are the side effects or the side effect profile we can expect from, from this treatment? trials are running in phases, phases one, two, three, and four. And each phase builds on the information from a previous phase. So, you know, we start off fairly small. So phase one studies are relatively small, often a small number of healthy volunteers. And we're trying to figure out what are the side effects? How does the body process the drug? We then move to phase two. These are a little bit bigger. We're trying to now say, well, let's understand more about how this treatment works in a particular illness. And of course, we continue to learn about the drug safety. We then move to phase three, and these can be quite big, actually. They vary in size, but they may include thousands, sometimes up to even 15,000 patients in, in a trial. And here we examine different dosages. We look at combinations of treatments. We look in different populations, which is really important, that diversity of groups. So men, women, young, old, various ethnic groups, and so on. We try to understand where the medicine or, or who the medicine works best for. And then after all of this, if we have sufficient evidence after all of this testing that the drug is safe and effective and does what we need it to do, the data is compiled into a submission, which is sent to health authorities. They evaluate the data and they decide whether to register the medication for a specific disease. There is one last phase called phase four. During this phase, the drug is actually on the market already. But here we look to determine, for example, how well it works over time or to try and monitor safety over the longer period. One important part of that team are our patients, not only as participants in trials, but our patient experts and patient advisors who are helping us and supporting our development of studies. The unique perspective of patients just cannot be overstated. Nobody knows this experience the way a patient really knows it. One of the things that we've learned from our patient advisors about things like home delivery of medicine or local lab collection, how we're trying to be more sensitive to decentralizing trials and bringing them closer to the patient experience, bringing them closer to home. Without patient volunteers, there are no clinical studies. We move more and more to partnering with patients in how we design our trials, make our trials and the outcomes more relevant for patients. I sometimes feel that folks don't realize that as a society, we are so indebted to our clinical trial patients like Baklani. Without them, we have no new medication, no new vaccines. And for me, there's a statistic which is really stark. In only 2 to 3% of eligible patients take part in clinical trials. So for folks who've uh, contributed, um, thank you. And really, I feel that as a society, we, we're indebted to all of our clinical trial patients.